let's talk about the relevant arterial anatomy. This is the relevant arterial anatomy when performing a genicular artery embolization. There's going to be six arteries of interest, and I've denoted them with red lettering. The black lettering are arteries that obviously you should be aware of, but aren't involved necessarily with embolization specifically. So we'll start at the top. You have your superficial femoral artery. And as you come down close to Hunter's Canal, you have the origin of the descending genicular artery often. And the artery of interest specifically off the descending genicular artery is the articular branch. And this feeds the medial compartment, the distal femoral condyle of the medial compartment. This is not to be confused with the saphenous branch, which is more often than not the lateral branch off the descending genicular. And this does not feed the joint at all. This is mainly cutaneous and nerves branches as, as well as muscles. And then we come down the popliteal artery, and then we have basically sort of the four workhorse arteries of the knee joint, and they're specifically denoted by the geographic quadrant of the knee that they supply. So you have your superior lateral genicular artery, and then you have your superior medial genicular artery. And if you look at these two arteries, you can see here that they kind of have this almost like a butterfly appearance, kind of like two kind of C-shaped arteries. You also have your median genicular artery. This usually comes off sort of more proximally. This is an artery to technically avoid. This goes to the cruciate ligaments. But then you have your inferior lateral, which just has a characteristic horizontal shape. And then you have your inferior medial genicular artery, which has more of a 45 degree angle. The other artery of interest is the recurrent anterior tibial. This supplies the lateral compartment and comes off the anterior tibial artery, as denoted here. And then you also obviously have your TP truck. So what this looks like on an angiogram, this is, again, as I think I referred to earlier, this is the first GAE I ever did. And this is sort of when I did this angiogram, I kind of had to take a step back because it can be very overwhelming. But if you start to look closely at this or do enough of these, the arteries sort of start jumping out at you. So if you look at this quick, more carefully, you can see there's your articular branch of the descending genicular kind of comes down, has a nice sort of almost a parallel course to the cortex of the distal femur, and then it sort of wraps around that condyle there. And then this is sort of that kind of butterfly or bat wing kind of appearance of the superior lateral and the superior medial genicular arteries. And then you have that horizontal course of that inferior lateral genicular like we just talked about, as well as that 45 degree angle of the inferior medial genicular. And then finally, you can see here, there's a tiny little anterior tibial recurrent artery as well. That's fantastic, man. I, it's funny, the first time I did one of these, I did it for hemarthrosis. This is like 10 years ago. And the, I came in one day, it was like a Monday. And he's like, oh, the guy who was, I was covering for was like, oh, by the way, there's a GAE embolization. I'm like, what? What is that? He's like, yeah, it's easy. There's, a, there's basically four arteries to worry about or to know about the superior and inferior medial and lateral genicular arteries. That's what you want to target. Like if, you know, <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> but then, you know, of course I did a Google search immediately after, but you know, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not that simple, right? Yeah. It's not that simple. And, and to your point, especially with an arthroplasty, now you have, now you're working around a giant yeah. metal implant as well. Yeah. yeah <laughs> thankfully they were pretty juicy, but still, I mean, it worked. It's wild. Yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a wonderful procedure. I think regardless of the indication, you know, I, I think as you talked about, you know, obviously that evolved from recurrent hemarthrosis, you know, we're doing it for OA, but you know, Akuno again, Godfather is doing this for multiple different reasons. I actually recently treated a patient for jumper's knee or patellar tendonitis, um, who did very well. Um, and then obviously it's also in the literature being described for post post TKA chronic pain, uh, or refractory pain. So the procedure itself is very interesting because it, it's sort of seemingly helping multiple different patient populations. You just posted a, a shoulder on Twitter, I think, the other day. Also very cool. You know, it's just yeah. amazing that what we're seeing. It's amazing. I, I, I tell people when we talk about this, I feel like the knee is, is Pandora's box. Like, I, like I'm very focused on the knee. It's a very prevalent disease, but also a lot of the data is there. And I think if we work really hard as a sort of as a specialty to try to validate this intervention, I think that then opens up the door for all these other therapies like, you know, adhesive capsulitis, plantar fasciitis, all these, you know, basically sports injuries, soft tissue injuries, all that sort of stuff. 